Look carefully at the pictures and identify which season in Goa do they describe. Surely you must have guessed the season by now. It is the refreshing and invigorating monsoons. I am sure that most of you, like me, are eagerly looking forward for the rains to begin. For the school showers of blessing to bring us some respite from the sweltering heat. To observe nature transcend and refresh itself. Well, the good news is that we are on the brink of its arrival already. And I cannot help but remember my childhood memories of the rain. How we'd enjoy jumping in the muddy puddles, making tiny paper boats, and enjoy watching them bob up and down in the streams. How carefree were our lives, running around in the rain, enjoying getting splashed by vehicles that would pass by. Well, of course, times have changed and things are much different today. In this chapter, A Short Monsoon Diary by Ruskin Bond, he describes the beauty of the hill station Missouri during the monsoon season. This lesson is in the form of several diary entries. Before we begin with the lesson, let us take a look at what is a diary. A diary is a record of personal experiences written day after day over a long period of time. For some people, a diary might just be a planner. For others, it might be a treasure of memories. For some others, it might be a place where they can be themselves, where they can treasure all their secrets, keep them safe from the others. Some diaries have gone on to hold incredible historical value. They are more than just a mere collection of routine activities. For example, the notebooks maintained by the famous explorer Marco Polo or the diaries maintained by Charles Darwin, Leonardo da Vinci, Anne Frank have given us so much of insights to human life and has helped us understand time better. In this lesson, A Short Monsoon Diary, Ruskin Bond uses his diary entries to describe how nature changes during the monsoon. Let us learn a little about our author. Born in Kasoli in the year 1934, Ruskin Bond is an Indian children's author of British descent. He has written more than 40 books and is the recipient of the Sahitya Academy Award, the Padma Shri and the Padma Bhushan Awards. Some of his most enjoyable books include The Eyes of the Eagle, The Adventures of Rusty, the cherry tree, and so on. We shall now begin with the lesson, A Short Monsoon Diary. Kindly open your textbooks to page 103 and follow as I read. A Short Monsoon Diary Do, do you know what a diary is? It is a record of personal experiences written day after day over a long period of time. You can also use a diary 
to note down things you plan to do immediately or in future. One of the most famous diaries published as a book is the diary of Anne Frank. Here are a few extracts from Ruskin Bond's diary in which he portrays the silent miracles of nature and life's little joys and regrets. Let's read on. June 24th The first day of monsoon mist and it's strange how all the birds fall silent as the mist comes climbing up the hill. Perhaps that's what makes the mist so melancholy. Not only does it conceal the hills, it blankets them in silence too. Only an hour ago, the trees were ringing with bird song, and now the forest is deathly still, as though it were midnight. Through the mist, Bidju is calling to his sister. I can hear him running about on the hillside, but I cannot see him. June 25th Some genuine early monsoon rain, warm and humid, and not that cold high altitude stuff we've been having all year. The plants seem to know it too, and the first cobra lily rears its head from the ferns as I walk up to the bank and post office. The mist affords a certain privacy. A schoolboy asked me to describe the hill station and valley in one sentence. And all I could say was, a paradise that might have been. June 27th the rains have heralded the arrival of some seasonal visitors, a leopard and several thousand leeches. Yesterday afternoon, the leopard lifted a dog from near the servants' quarter below the school. In the evening, it attacked one of Biju's cows, but fled at the approach of Biju's mother, who came screaming imprecations. As for the leeches, I shall soon get used to a little bloodletting every day. Other new arrivals are the scarlet minivets. The females are yellow, flitting silently among the leaves like brilliant jewels. No matter how leafy the trees, these brightly colored birds cannot conceal themselves. Although, by remaining absolutely silent, they sometimes contrive to go unnoticed. Along come a pair of drongos, unnecessarily aggressive, chasing the minivets away. A tree creeper moves rapidly up the trunk of the oak tree, snapping up insects all the way. Now that the rains are here, there is no dirt or food for the insectivorous birds. August 2nd. All night the rain has been drumming on the corrugated tin roof. There has been no storm, no thunder, just the steady swish of a tropical downpour. It helps me to lie awake. At the same time, it doesn't keep me from sleeping. It is a good sound to read by. The rain outside, the quiet within. And although tin roofs are given to springing unaccountable leaks, there is a feeling of being untouched by and yet in touch with the rain. August 3rd. The rain stops. The clouds begin to break up. The sun strikes the hill on my left. A woman is chopping up sticks. I hear the tinkle of cowbells. In the oak tree, a crow shakes the raindrops from his feathers and caws disconsolately. Water drips from a leaking drain pipe 
and suddenly clean and pure. The song of the whistling thrush emerges like a dark, sweet secret from the depths of the ravine. August 12th Endless rain and a permanent mist. We haven't seen the sun for eight or nine days. Everything damp and soggy. Nowhere to go. Pace the room, look out of the window at a few bobbing umbrellas. At least it isn't cold rain. The hillsides are lush as late monsoon flowers begin to appear. Wild balsam, dahlias, begonias and ground orchids. August 31st. It is the last day of August and the lush monsoon growth has reached its peak. The seeds of the cobra lily are turning red, signifying that the rains are coming to an end. In a few days, the ferns will start turning yellow, but right now they are still firm, green and upright. Ground orchids, mauve lady slipper and the white butterfly orchids put on a fashion display on the grassy slopes of Landor. Wild dahlias, red, yellow and magenta, rear their heads from the rocky crevices where they have taken hold. Snakes and rodents, flooded out of their holes and burrows, take shelter in roofs, attics and go-downs. A shrew, weak of eyesight, blunders about the rooms, much to the amusement of the children. Don't kill it, admonishes their grandmother. Chichundars are lucky. They bring money. And sure enough, I received a check in the mail. Not a very large one, but welcome all the same. October 3rd we have gone straight from monsoon into winter rain, snow at higher altitudes. After an evening hailstorm, the sky and hills are suffused with a beautiful golden light. January 26th, winter rains in the hills. In the hushed silence of the house, when I'm quite alone, and my friend who was here has gone. It's very lonely, very quiet, and I sit in a liquid silence, a silence within, surrounded by the rhythm of rain, the steady drift of water on leaves, on lemons, on roof, drumming on drenched dahlias and window panes, while the mist holds the house in a dark caress. As I pause near a window, the rain stops and starts again. And the trees, no longer green but grey, menace me with their loneliness. March 23rd Late March, end of winter, the blackest cloud I've ever seen squatted over Masuri and then it hailed marbles for half an hour. Nothing like a hailstorm to clear the sky. Even as I write, I see a rainbow forming. This is the end of today's session. It is time now for some homework. Firstly, listen to the section introducing the author and write a short note on Ruskin Bond. Next, read the lesson by yourself and learn spellings of difficult words.